Hello, Caroline from Spirit of Nature Art here, bringing you another video tutorial. This time turning this uh, rather boring kind of black three pounds sketchbook that I picked up in the shop into something a little bit more exciting. Uh, and I thought I would use this project uh, to use some new supplies I picked up uh, recently. I was lucky enough to go on a workshop with the very talented Tracy Scott. Um, I love her use of colours, uh, the way she uses those colours with black. Um, and I just kind of thought this was a really nice way for me to play around with a few of the stencils and stamps that I picked up whilst I was on the workshop. So I am starting off here with some, uh, this is some of the Paper Artsy Fresco Finish paints. Because I'm working on black, I've chosen to use some of the opaque paints. Uh, so Fresco Finish comes in three different transparencies, opaque, semi-opaque and translucent. So because of that black, using the opaque means I need less of it to create that real pop of colour. We can see that sort of instantly sat on top of the black. And I'm just going to blend these two colours together. No surprise, I'm using turquoise and purple as my favourite colours. Um, and I'm using a dry brush. So when I'm trying to get a blend, I guess my, my kind of uh, ways to get an, a good easy blend is using a dry brush and just layering, going back over and over with those different colours until you get that blend that you want. So you'll see that's what I'm doing here, one colour at a time, going on with the kind of big blocks first of all, and then you'll notice I've switched my brush, I'm using my brush side on now rather than flat, just to start to get that kind of more feathered kind of blend between the two. And that still doesn't look very blended at all, does it? But you'll notice the more I go on, the more layers I put on, the more I repeat that, the more that blending starts to happen. So I just keep going until I'm happy with the effect that I am looking for. This is one of the, the first uh, Tracy Scott things that I purchased, this beautiful stencil. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Uh, and I am using my embossing ink pad to go over that stencil so that the embossing ink is going through it. And then, so you can just about see that, I think. You can just about see where the embossing ink there is sitting on the page. And I'm going in now with some beautiful gold embossing powder. I'm not too bothered about um, any little odds and sods of embossing powder that have ended up on the rest of the page because when I heat set it, they almost look like splatters. So I quite like that. And sometimes I purposefully put that on. Um, one thing I will say if you're using embossing ink on anything, whether that's stencils or stamps, is to clean them as soon as possible. Uh, otherwise you'll get end up with a really sticky residue, uh, which potentially could ruin your stencil or stamp. So look how wonderful that looks as soon as you heat set it. That beautiful gold and that stencil is just gorgeous, isn't it? So now I'm just kind of going in and adding a little bit more kind of detail and, to, and texture to the background. So using, um, first of all, this is a little script stamp. This is one of the Paper Artsy Minis. I really like these. They're really nice and easy to use. Uh, and then I'm going in and using, I think those are, I think those are Art by Marlene, just little mark making stamps. And I'm using my white ink for this. So the script stamp was kind of um, I was using that just to kind of almost create the the darkness and the shadows and using um, this really sweet little um, circle stencil to add some highlights and to almost frighten the page a little bit as well and then of course the page wouldn't be finished mixed media page wouldn't be finished without some splatters so going in um, I think this is the paper artsy I think it's snowflake uh, just adding, you saw me there, squirt a little bit of water on and use my brush, uh, my fan brush, just to add some splatters. And once that was dry, turn it over and I'm now doing the back page. 
So I want this to feel like a project that's all kind of connected. So I'm using some of the same colors, but not all of them. So um, you'll see I'm using that same turquoise, but now I'm using more of a sort of pinky color, knowing that those two will blend together and create a nice purple as well. And with both of these backgrounds, the front page and the back page, I'm not too bothered about getting a perfect blend because I know I'm putting stuff over the top. I just want to, to, for those colors to sit naturally together, but I'm not looking for like an ombre effect or anything like that. Um, so I'm just using the exact same technique, using those two colors and starting to create that really nice, bright, vibrant background. On this page I thought I would use one of the, the stamp sets that I picked up from Tracy. Um, this isn't one of her recent ones, this is quite an old release, but I love mandalas so uh, I couldn't resist it. So I am uh, going to stamp this onto tissue paper. So the effect I'm looking for is I almost want to push that bright coloured background that I've created there <laughs> into the background. So um, I am using a, uh, I think I'm using Versafine uh, ink there, which is permanent, uh, stamping uh, these two elements from that stamp set onto my tissue paper and then making sure that is properly dry. So I do heat set it as well uh, because that ink does tend to sit on top of the tissue paper. And rather than cutting this out, uh, I'm actually going to place that tissue paper over the whole of the background. Like I said, I kind of want to push it into the background a little bit. I want it to fade, but also I know that this tissue paper will go slightly translucent, but not completely translucent. So you'll see as this starts to uh, to dry that I end up with what looks almost like a sort of um, peeled paint effect. Uh, and it just kind of, wow, oh, just quite, it adds something a little bit different, a bit of texture and it enables me to, uh, to the, the kind of main reason I wanted to do that was because I wanted to, for the pop of color really to be in that mandala. So I'm just using matte medium uh, to um, adhere that. And then uh, inspired by Tracy, very much this is a technique Tracy really likes to, to use. I was inspired by her to dig out my coloring pencils, which I have to hold my hands up, have been sat in a drawer somewhere in my art room, probably for quite a few years. Um, I used to use these coloring pencils a lot to do like Zen gems, I used to do a lot with Zen Tangle, um, uh, but they have sat at being um, very lonely uh, in my drawer for a long time. So I was really inspired to bring these out uh, and use them to really add a pop of color to that beautiful design. So I use, these pencils are uh, Prismacolor pencils. Um, uh, and they are designed to kind of create this really nice blend. And you'll see what I'm doing here uh, is going in with the, whenever I'm doing a blend like this, I will pick a dark, a medium and a light of the same kind of color uh, and start with the dark and work up to the light, putting on a very light coat to start with and then going back over and over, building each layer up until you get that lovely blend.
notice as I'm going that I'm also using my pens as well. So going back in with the black pen just to create that sharper outline where I've been colouring um, and using my, uh, my white gel pen as well to add some highlights and details, picking out some of those details there that may have got lost in the colouring, but not all of them. I've also used my gold pen to pick out some little highlights as well um, and mirroring the front page, getting some splatters in. So using some black on this page as well as picking out some of that gold that I've used in the, uh, in the pattern as well. Um, and now I decided to go back and add a little sentiment onto that front page. So I'm moving about backwards and forwards across these two pages. So just using, um, uh, a sentiment stamp here, stamping it again with the embossing ink using that same gold. It just felt like that space in the top corner there was a bit too empty and needed something to draw the eye. So just heat setting that now and finishing off that front page. And there we go. And there's the back page. I added a bit of stamping as well to mirror what was on the front. But of course, there are two more pages, aren't there? They're the inside covers as well, and I didn't want them to kind of go to waste. Another opportunity to continue playing with the, uh, the lovely things I picked up at that workshop. So this is the other part of the stamp in, uh, in Tracy Scott's um, set that I picked up, this beautiful mandala. So I'm doing the same, I'm using my embossing ink and you know what, I'm so impressed by how much detail comes out on these. Sometimes, particularly if you're using the embossing ink, it's not always as, as, as detailed, but these are beautiful. And I thought with black, honestly, the contrast with white is gonna be beautiful. So white embossing powder this time. And just look how that is. <laughs> oh, just every time look at that and I think that's just so beautiful. It's so detailed. All that lacy pattern in the mandala. Just getting rid of there of any little extra bits of embossing powder that have landed on the page before I heat set it. And that process of heat setting embossing powder is always quite magical. And then just wanted to bring in a few more elements of those stamps to see how they they looked. Whenever I get new things like this, new stamps, new stencils, I always want to play around with them a little bit so that I, I'm much more aware of what I've got and how I can use them and how they look. So that when I'm sitting in front of a blank piece of paper, I've got something in my mind about the things that I have around me, about how they come out and what they look like. So I always try and do something with them before they end up getting sort of filed and put away in the correct place um, so that it kind of sticks in my mind a little bit better. So I'm just adding some of those more, more of those elements. I'm just using my, I've got an embossing, the, the same VersaFine embossing ink in a pen there because I just wanted to take that, uh, that line of that feather up into the, um, where the spiral was, which of course the stamp wouldn't go into and adding a nice sentiment, relax. Mm. And now the final back page. This is one of the other stencil that I picked up. And again, I'm mirroring the same colors, but this time what I'm doing is I'm using um, one of those, kind of like you normally use it with distress inks, uh, one of those daubers um, to put that paint through the stencil. So again, I'm using the, I'll put the colors below, but the same paper artsy colors that I used, I think these are the same two as on the front page. And just going in really lightly with a light layer, you're better off with stencils and using paint like this to go in with a really light layer and build those layers up. Otherwise you can get quite, it might bleed underneath the stencil um, and end up with quite a splodgy effect. And this stencil has got quite a lot of fine details. So um, you'll notice every time I dob my dobber into the paint, I then take some off before I go into the actual stencil. And now bringing in that purple colour and again a little bit of blending between those two colours. And the trickiest thing doing something like this is making sure that the stencil doesn't move. So you know you can stick it down with a bit of washi tape uh, to keep it steadier. Um, but again when you've got fine detail like this sometimes you need to have your fingers right on it so that it doesn't pull up as you're putting the paint through. So there we go. 
still some areas that are a little bit kind of splodgy through the stencil but that's fine we'll tidy those up as we go along and that's what I'm doing now I'm going to go round that design with my black pen just to sharpen it up a little bit you'll see how that works straight away and now oh gosh okay <laughs> I really did not like what I ended up doing here with the white pen. Um, I persevered with it, you'll see as we go through the video, but I did fix it um, uh, uh, later on, so you'll see how I do this. Um, it just didn't work the way I was wanting it to. And as I started um, colouring over on this side, the more I was working on this side, the more I disliked what I'd done on the other side. So I am now taking those same Prismacolor pencils and I am going in and colouring over the top of that paint that I've put down. And you might kind of wonder why. It's like, Caroline, you've got your colour down already, now what are you doing? But this allows me to add some more depth to those colours. So again, I'm doing the same thing, a dark, medium and light of that same colour and going in and kind of choosing a place where the highlights are and where the, the deeper colours are and just creating that blend just like I did on the mandala on the other page. And you'll see the impact of that. It really pops these colours really brightly and that was something I'd never thought of doing that before, adding the colouring on top of uh, a base layer before um, and that was that was something that um, something that Tracy Scott does a lot of which is why her artwork is, is so vibrant. So I'm going in now and adding some of my own patterns to that stencil so I'm just using my uh, my black pen I will put what it is below it's pretty sure it's a uniball um, and that goes over the uh, the paint really well so just adding in a little bit of kind of extra kind of doodling to those shapes that are created by the stencil. And yeah, as you can see, the more I work over here, the more I look at that, <laughs> that white stuff on the other side and I think, mm, I don't like that at all. And you'll see here I tried to fix that white by adding more white to it and I disliked it even more. <laughs> so every time I tried to do something over there to fix it, um, uh, it really didn't work. So I went back over to the side that I was enjoying working on and enjoying the effect of. So I'm doing some more of that blending with those colours uh, and thinking, oh, do you know what, I've just got to cover that up. Uh, I could have painted over it but there, would have, there was so many layers of that white paint now you would have still seen it through. So I decided what I was going to do was create a little pocket. So I've got some black card here, I'm going to take that stencil and create the exact same pattern on that piece of black card there, of the same colour. I'm going to cut that out and we are going to put that over the top of the bit that I don't like um, and create a pocket. So I'm just going to cut this out, just that one part, so look we can see that fits directly over the top of that bit. Uh, I could have just glued the whole thing down but I thought what a lovely opportunity to create a little pocket where I can pop something, maybe um, create a little colour chart. So sticking that down, just gluing it along the edges only. Hiding that bit that I really did not like and giving me, you can see where I already did, um, there we go, little pocket. You can see where, here we go, I've done some more colouring now. You wouldn't know that that was two different pieces. So that pocket's almost like a bit of a secret pocket. And just going in and doing some more of that colouring. So you can see I start with the dark colour move up into the lighter colour and just go backwards and forwards until those colours are blended. And a 
you're doing a large area, you're gonna maybe need to do more layers to get that blending. Small areas like this, these little teeny tiny ones, um, maybe like one or two layers are all that's needed to get that nice blend. And Tracy Scott does a fab online uh, color pencil masterclass. So uh, if this is a technique that you're interested in, I'd highly recommend uh, doing that. She's a great teacher. So here we go, the finished piece from that little boring black book to this beautiful notebook. Four little easy fun projects and now I have a lovely little notebook to do some more projects in. So I hope you like this, I hope you are inspired to get creating with your stamps and stencils.